Welcome to the Lawless Family Court video series, which is designed to help you navigate our incompetent and corrupt United States family court system, which is violating the law constantly in almost every case to generate monies for itself, both lawyers and judges. The first thing they do is hold a temporary orders hearing at which time they terminate the bulk of one parent's rights. Termination of parental rights without clear and convincing evidence at a temporary orders hearing is completely unlawful and a civil rights violation. This then enables the other abuses and drives the expensive cases that allow the lawyers to bill hundreds of dollars an hour and create a long drawn out fight that should have never existed in the first place. With a th single stroke of a pen, the judge violates the parent's civil rights and sets up what the Wall Street Journal says averages a $78,000 legal battle. And that number is actually much greater in many states and quite a few years old. This cost does not even take into account the greater costs of the human damage, lost work, and extreme mental health damage and problems to both children and parents that the family courts create. These include depression and post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, caused by this process. In fact, it's even got its own name specifically for the judicial system, a form of PTSD called legal abuse syndrome. The process is causing cutting of children, drug usage, gang violence, teen suicide, teen pregnancy, and a dozen other things that skyrocket when children are separated from one of their parents. Each of these pathologies goes up between 660% and 2400% total for a total of all of these pathologies of 14,600%. In fact, it appears now that more than 50% of mental health problems are literally caused by family court judges and their sole custody orders. The $78,000 does not include all of the funds that the federal government pays family courts under a program called Title IV-D, which pays about 23% of every child support order to the state. This amounts to billions of dollars a year and hundreds of millions of dollars for many states. The U.S. Supreme Court, the highest law in the land and their case law around the Constitution, is clearly being ignored because they say that parental rights are fundamental rights. This sets a very high bar for determining parental rights or even limiting them in any way. They terminate parental rights at the drop of a hat to get parents to spend a fortune on lawyers and to begin this big legal battle, often eating into the savings, retirement savings, and college funds of children by generating huge legal bills. What a racket. The judges set themselves up as immune and then violate civil rights to generate income for themselves and their brother lawyers, which doesn't help any of their clients. In fact, it's proven to destroy their lives. There are also dozens of other cases, including federal and state cases, that prevent the termination of parental rights without a very high bar. But these are eroding as states grab more power and money for themselves. And clearly, our entire judicial system has been corrupted by these billions of dollars of annual revenue for themselves. Essentially, what this means is that judges and lawyers are intentionally ignoring the law so that they can set up these expensive custody battles. Let me tell you why what they do in the termination of parental rights in these temporary order hearings is completely illegal and unconstitutional. Firstly, the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution says that all people must be treated equally. 
This, combined with parental rights being fundamental rights, has only one possible legal conclusion. That equal custody and equal parenting time of the children is the only constitutional order that the court can give relative to parental rights unless they have clear and convincing evidence, which is a very high bar, full due process, and strict scrutiny. Those are three technical legal terms which all of the 50 state courts seem to be ignoring completely for their own benefit and for parents and children's peril. Children under the age of 18 are essentially property or under the law called chattel. They don't have any rights themselves, and the Supreme Court has said the parents get to make the decisions about what is going to happen in their upbringing. Anything except an equal custody order without that clear and convincing evidence is a civil rights violation. This means that an informal hearing where only the lawyers speak, which results in the lowering, not the full termination, but even the lowering of parental rights, is a civil rights violation and is illegal for the judge to do. Your lawyer will tell you otherwise. The judge may tell you otherwise. But judges have no right to legally interfere with a child unless that child is already being harmed. This is a, a doctrine called parens patriae, which is a Latin saying that was created to protect children that were in danger or abandoned so the state could step in. This has been stretched and taken and abused so that the individual state judicial systems pretend they have power over children when they don't to set up these cases. It's unlawful and it's designed to start an expensive legal battle. This unlawful act creates a massive revenue stream of profits for both divorce lawyers and the family court judicial system today. In fact, the legal fees alone are over $50 billion and there is at least that much again in federal funds, kickbacks, and other fees and hang of hangers-on of the court that are brought in on these cases without any legal right of the judge having the ability to do that. No one would spend tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on useless lawyers if their parental rights were not terminated from the very beginning. So the judge must violate your civil rights pretty much in the very first hearing to set up this racket. These courts want to pretend there are dangers to the children as an excuse for their power. And for money generation, the courts and lawyers encourage the parties to lie, essentially offering one party hundreds of thousands of dollars in child support, control of the children, control of the home, and revenge as an incentive to lie. And then they try to use those lies as an excuse to lower or effectively terminate one parent's rights, usually the parent with the most money that they want to spend it to get the kids back or put into child support and alimony so that they can share in that transfer of wealth. But the total lack of an evidentiary standard, even a preponderance of evidence, is a joke. The U.S. Supreme Court says that clear and convincing evidence, which is at the 85% level, as opposed to a preponderance of evidence, which is 50.1% approximately, must be used to change or limit any parental rights. I have never once seen a judge tell this to any plaintiff or defendant in the court. Instead, they pretend they can do whatever they want and willy-nilly terminate parental rights because it's convenient and generates enormous amounts of money for them. But a preponderance of evidence, according to the U.S. Supreme Court, not me, is legally insufficient to limit or terminate any parental rights. Issuance of any temporary orders, therefore, not ordering equal custody, is clearly unlawful without this clear and convincing evidence that a parent is unfit or dangerous to a child. 
parents maintain the right to decisions regarding the care and upbringing of their children, unless the state meets this high legal bar showing that the child is in danger, but it is clearly ignored by all 50 states. Is that a conspiracy? That 50 states completely ignore the U.S. Supreme Court to generate these federal funds for themselves? This can be seen as nothing but proof of a conspiracy to ignore the law for power and profit. So what you need to remember is that any non-evidentiary hearing, informal hearing, where you don't have full due process, which is notice, the right to present evidence, the right to present witnesses, and the right to cross-examine witnesses against you directly. If you don't get those rights, the family court has no right legally to limit your parental rights or issue a temporary order. I hope you'll use this information and pass it on to other victims of our family court system and watch the rest of our series to defend yourself against this racket.